So right now, as we wait for the live stream to come on, let's just meditate on his goodness and just get our hearts ready for worship. Lord, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you because you are still God. You are still God through the fear. You are still God through the pain. You are still God through the hurt. You are still God when we don't understand. You are still God when nothing makes sense. You are still God. And we just thank you, Father God. May we just be still and know that you are God. That you will be exalted in all the earth. And amongst the heathens, Lord, we just thank you. still God in the waiting. You're still God in the storm. You're still God in the silence. You're still God when it's You're still God of provision. You're still God of hope. You're still God of the harvest. You're still God of overflow. don't understand you're still God when nothing makes sense you're still God so I'll build my life on this you are who you say you are you are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. Cause I've seen it 
And I know that you are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You are Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Your Savior, Messiah. When I don't understand, you're still God. When nothing makes sense, you're still God. So I'll build my life on this. You're still God 
when nothing makes sense. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus be the 
center of your church and every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you Jesus oh Jesus say your voice. testimony because you know I hear people say oh man you sing really good you blessed me you've made me cry you you know I hear these things but I realized there's a group here who really didn't know me and know why I do it it's not because I have a beautiful voice or you know God gets me with this voice and I'm grateful it's because of the things he brought me out of I sing these and, and just <laughs> what I share is because of things he brought me out of and still bringing me out of, the things that he's bringing to the surface. So when I sing these songs, I'm like, Lord, you did this for me when I didn't see it. So when we sing, Jesus, you're the center of my life, really think, hey, is there anything that I'm not revolving around Jesus is he not the center of that thing that I fear is he not the center of the thing that I lack is he not the center of the thing that I may want or need like is he the center so when we come here Sunday after Sunday God is speaking every Sunday not only through the songs through the worship when somebody shares for the announcements God is always speaking through everything. Let's tune our ears to him speaking. Because he's speaking. We 
you can get lost in, in, the, in the music and like, oh, this song is dope, but are we really listening to what it's saying? <laughs> you know, the Word of God says that we have been adopted into sonship. <laughs> so that means that what Jesus have, we have, you know? We ain't orphans. We rich. We got blessings that are given to us. You go into your mother's house, father's house, people you know, and you go in the refrigerator, you eat their food, right? You don't think about it. <laughs> yep, you don't think about it. But if you go into somebody's house you don't know, you see it. You sometimes even refuse food because you're like, no, I'm okay, but you're starving. <laughs> so that's like we adopted into sonship. Let me tell you, I started to get sick this week. And I said, oh no. God, you are the great physician. You are the healer. That soul throw had to go. That cough had to go. And it's so funny because I, I was thinking, I was telling my sister Rena, I said, you know, I was thinking of that scripture when it says when you're sick, let's go to the elders and let them lay hands on you and pray for you and you will be healed. Let me tell you something, I had a cough this morning, and when you bring up that scripture, Rena's like, I'm like, I know. Where that cough at? Where that cough at? We need to start believing what we're reading in the word of God. Because it is real. It is real, you have to own, you have to know that you are adopted into sonship. You have to know that you are a son and daughter of a king, of a king that doesn't waver that keeps his promises and if he says it then it's so no matter what you see no matter what happens if he said it it's so it's so and i believe that let's see this one more time nothing else matters and nothing world will do Jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you Jesus you at the center of it all Hallelujah, Jesus. Say it with me, Jesus. 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 Amen. No other name but the name of Jesus. The name that every knee will bow. If you're not bowing now, you will eventually. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord of lords, King of kings, Worthy of it all, the Lamb of God, Redeemer, Messiah, Healer, King of Kings, the Rose of Sharon is Jesus. Amen. And let me tell you, during my fast, that's what the Lord has been reminding me, and I share that with my sister this morning, is who Jesus is. So we were like, okay, we're in sync here, all right? He's just been reminding me of who he is. And it's been so sweet and so powerful to be at that place of remembering him. And so many songs that I've sung in the 80s and 90s have just been welling up in my spirit about who Jesus is. And one of the songs this morning was, Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is mind and I started it too high Jesus your name is power Jesus your name is mind Jesus' name can break 
every stronghold. Jesus' name can bring so much deliverance. Whatever you're hoping for, he can do it. Just by the mere name of Jesus, he can break every stronghold. In your life, in your family's life, you may not be seeing it, but you don't know what God is doing. And so whatever you're hoping for, make Jesus the center of it all. Amen. You can't be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. We had a powerful time in prayer. And I know healing took place. I know many things took place when we were downstairs. And, and I can feel the overflow here right now. And it's going to overflow into your families. Trust and believe in the Lord. Amen. If you are visiting us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. I've seen some faces here that I'm not too familiar with. Any new faces? I'm not going to point you out. Don't worry. Don't worry. But we do want to give you a gift. So if you don't mind raising your hand, we thank you. Amen. And back there, we have some new visitors here. Over here, amen. Oh, we got a few visitors today. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. I pray that you feel the presence and the love of God here. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Joe, Pastor Vinny. I don't know where Pastor Vinny is. Oh, Pastor Vinny. I'm sorry, Pastor Vinny. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm so used to looking back and seeing him in the back. That's why I don't even think he's in the front. It's not my glasses. No, I didn't say that. And myself, Pastor Olga, welcome to Fordham Manor Church. Those of you that are joining us online, I didn't forget you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you that may be streaming this later on, thank you for joining us. We're so blessed to have a place to worship. Amen. We are really blessed. With that said, can you turn to someone and say, so glad to see you this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So excited to see each other. Let's find ourselves the seats back whenever you get a chance. You guys all look so good today. It's so good to be here in the house of the Lord with you guys again. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm, I'm honored to serve as one of the deacons in the church. Um, what a mighty God we serve. He's God when it makes sense, and even when it doesn't make sense, he's still God. So grateful he stays on his throne for ages. Uh, we're so glad you joined us today. Um, such a blessing to be with you. Are we online? And online service, too, if it's live stream, right? It is. Okay. Um, welcome online family. We miss you guys here. Hopefully you can join us in person, but we're so glad and thank you for the online service that the Lord has allowed us to experience here. Um, 
We are happy to be on this, um, to embark on this journey of prayer. God's word says my house will be the house of prayer. And we started off the year with 21 days of fasting. I see all of us survive. Thank you, Jesus. Right, I see you guys all in one piece. Thank you, Lord. Um, such an honor to be able to join the Lord in any type of revelation and blessing that he has for us. So it's such an honor to be able to do that. Please continue to keep that as the heart, um, as God's heart for you throughout the year. Prayer, so important. Know that God wants to talk to you. So just go talk to him. Even when you don't have the words, to say Jesus. And it's enough, you know. Um, we are going to be <clears throat> having a psalmist ministry workshop where you can have the opportunity to explore the scripture together encourage others to do the same we'll deepen and we will come together and learn things together um, it will be february 17th 9 30 a.m through 12 30 p.m um, the sign up sheet will be in the back or you can see deacon carolyn if you find her, if you have any questions, sign up so we can send you the link and further information. I believe it's going to be so, so fun. Learning God's word is one of the most amazing um, things we can do. We're honored to have God's word in our hands and be able to explore it together freely. So please take advantage of that. Come together and we'll learn together. Um, we are going to continue with the legacy building campaign we're so excited the lord allowed us to have this building free of cost but with a lot of responsibility which is an honor as well to be able to come and have responsibility in the kingdom of his work um, this will include the repairs in the building we're going to have new bathrooms hallelujah for that no more lines hopefully and we will be coming up with a lift for the disabled folks so that they can come join us in person as well. We want to be more accessible for the community and for others who are not able to come in. Pray for that, um, contribute, and uh, we will keep you posted with that. Um, we are having a boot camp. I remember doing boot camps. They were like the highlight of my year. They get you so excited and convicted too. So we will be having a three-day in-house in this building, a boot camp. It will be um, about the spiritual formation as the foundation of spiritual growth. We'll take the time to read God's word together again, meditate on it. We're believing for the Lord to come in a mighty and a unique way and expect breakthrough in your life and the life of those around you. Um, it begins Thursday the 15th through Saturday, February um, 17th. The cost is $45. It's not too bad. Thank the Lord that we have it accessible. The book that will be used is by Dr. Tony Evans. It's called Victory and spiritual warfare, which is just so important. It's part of every part of our lives. If you sign up today, you will receive a free booklet um, winning your spirit, on winning your spiritual battles by Dr. Tony Evans. Again, please, we have the sign-up sheets at the back. You can sign up at the end of the service. We are having new members orientation. Um, those of you who are here joining us for the first time, we're so glad you're here. Hopefully you come back. Uh, we will be meeting downstairs uh, February the 11th, right after the church service. And we will have luncheon with the pastors for the new members. Um, oh, no, just the orientation, sorry. Um, where you can learn more about the church and you have the opportunity to ask questions, bring up your concerns, see how you can get more involved with the church, which is so crucial. We're having the Photomatic Cafe where you can register for the events. If you have any questions, let us know. The cafe is when you come out, take a right, another right, and it's the primary room right before the bathroom. We have three ways to give. Yay. Um, thank the Lord that he blesses us to give back to him. 
You can give in person when the ushers come around. You can text Bronx Church as one word to 73256. Or you can give online using your bank information or credit card or debit card information. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, I'm excited to be with all of you here today. I'm glad that you came out, brave the rain. Amen. Um, there was some healing rain going down downstairs in the, in, the, in the prayer room. Praise the Lord. We're believing um, and trusting the Lord for his word. And, and we're just so grateful to God that you are here joining us today. We want to welcome everybody that's joining us online. I'm going to pray for the offering right now as we continue our service, as we give God thanks for everything that he's given us. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We thank you for meeting us in every area of our life, Lord God. We thank you that there is not one area of our life that is not touched by your goodness, Lord, today. We thank you for the 100% that you give us. And we give back a portion today by faith, thanking you, Lord God, that you are our provider, Lord God. So today, Lord, we give thanks and um, we show that with our pocketbook, we show that with our listening ear, Lord God. We show that by with our lips, Lord God, of praise. Um, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people say, amen. How can I say things? For the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my Oh, that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. To God.
Hallelujah, Lord. To you be the glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. For the things you have done, Lord God. Hallelujah. We just give you thanks and praise, Lord, almighty God. You are worthy to be praised today, Lord. We worship you today, Lord God. You are worthy. You are worthy. Somebody give God praise today. Isn't he worthy today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. What a beautiful song. Amen. That's an oldie, but a goodie. Some of those classics, you got to dust off your shelf. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with all of you, family. How many, how many are glad to be in the house of God today? Amen? <laughs> to God be the glory. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time, I want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Joe, and I'm the senior pastor of this beautiful church body. To all our visitors, we're glad that you're here, and I hope that you feel right at home today in the body of Christ. And I want to extend my greetings to our virtual church family. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're glad that you could be with us. Whatever time you're watching, welcome to Fort Amana Church. Sunday service. Amen. It's been said that words have power. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. Words we speak can build a person up and harmful words can, can cause significant damage. For example, we remember the teachers, the coaches, the mentors who encouraged us and saw a potential in others. Pastor Bruce Grady was a former assistant pastor in this church, and I was blessed to be under his ministry as a young adult, and he mentored me throughout the years, and Pastor Bruce is one of the most encouraging people I know. When I was a young minister, Pastor Bruce would say things like, Joe, I think you're doing a great job. Keep up the excellent work for the Lord. You're making an impact on others, and I'm looking around, I'm like, me, you know, but he saw something in me and he built me up with his words. Amen. Those words meant the world to me. What positive words do you remember from a teacher, a mentor from childhood that affirmed your calling? I'm sure all of us can remember somebody speaking good words. On this flip side, we can also remember the negative word or label that was said to us. We, we don't forget the pain of being called words like lazy or worthless or no good. Harmful words spoken by somebody in authority can haunt us in our adult lives. The tongue has the power of life and death. Consider this. If we have the power over others to positively or negatively impact them, imagine how much more power God's word has. Somebody say power. Last week we looked at the 
power found in Jesus' name. Amen? And Jesus said that we can ask her for anything in his name, and as long as it's in alignment with God's will, he will grant it to us. This week, we will look at the power in God's word, God's written word found in the Bible. The power of God's word can be seen in creation. In Genesis 1, in Genesis 1-1, we read that the earth was formless until God spoke and his word went forth and let there was light. God's word created the universe, everything seen and unseen. God's word has been spoken into our hearts and we were born again into eternal life through the power of God's word. James chapter 1, verse 18 says this, God chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. 1 Peter 1, 23 says this, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living, enduring word of God. Jesus is the living word, and he has always existed. The Lord Jesus today speaks through his word, the Bible. And in our time together, we will see how God's word has the power to change us and change our lives. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Uh, let's pray before we read God's word. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that you would speak like only you could speak. Holy Spirit, let us see what you want us to see. Let us hear what you want us to hear and understand and help us to obey your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I pray this all in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people say together, amen. amen. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Praise be to God. Amen. The title and subject of today's message is The Power of God's Word. And we're going to be looking at three different ways God's Word makes an impact on our lives. I want you to write down point number one. God's word gives us power for daily living. Somebody say power. How many have been on the Daniel fast during these 21 days? I could tell by, by the waistlines. Amen. The, the Daniel fast is, is hard, especially when you start. Amen, somebody? I tell you, I never realized how much uh, I craved bad food until I started to eat only good food. Amen. Before the fast, I would watch football games and never notice any of the food commercials. But during the Daniel fast, I noticed those Wendy's commercials in particular, the Baconator on a pretzel bun. I'm like, what? How come nobody told me about this? It's like the devil was saying, look at what you've been missing, right? A few days into the Daniel fast, though, I have to tell you, I didn't like the good, good healthy food at first. It felt bland. I miss my pizza. I miss my chicken. Amen, somebody? All right, tell the truth. Shame the devil, somebody. I praise God. I was able to stay focused, and then something happened. The more good food I ate, the more energy I had during the day. I was able to accomplish more, lose excess fat. I had more energy for exercise. I was able to sleep better, and I started liking the food that I despised at first. How many have experienced some of the benefits of eating good food over these 21 days? Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. God's word is like eating healthy. We may not look like the good food at first, but after eating good, good food over time, we acquire a taste for it. Jesus said that man does not live on bread alone, but by what? Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Tell your neighbor, eat God's word. 
Jesus said that we can sustain our spiritual health by constantly consuming the word of God. But so many of us don't like God's word because we're so used to feeding our spirit junk food. We don't like God's word because we are so busy entertaining ourselves through movies, TV, social media, things that are lustful or violent and gossipful. We don't like the taste of the word because we're addicted to things that aren't necessarily bad in themselves. We entertain ourselves with TikTok, Instagram, and Endless doom scrolling. We fill ourselves with political news, gaming, binging, sports, TV shows, novellas. Not that anybody does that here. (laughs) Instead of having time for devotionals and reading God's word. Or maybe we'll give it five minutes. Something's wrong. Just like our physical diets are off, our spiritual diet is off. We are starving spiritually and our flesh is obese. Listen, you may come to church weekly, and that's good, but that's only a start. We can't eat spiritually once a week and survive in a world that is toxic to our spirit. Imagine someone telling me, Pastor Joe, I, I eat a, a great meal once a week. I eat greens. I, I, I eat quinoa. I eat fruit. Once I get that good meal out of the way, I eat whatever I want during the rest of the week. Cakes, junk food, sugary cereals, all week long. You can't live on one good spiritual meal per week. You can't eat on one physical meal per week. Job said this about God's word. Job. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. It's time for us to return to the food of God's word that will sustain us through the hard times that we're going to face this year. Amen? It's time for us to return to the meat of God's word that will give us endurance when we're facing the battle. It's time to wean ourselves off of the junk food in the world that we have become addicted to. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says this, like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Some of us need to grow up. Somebody say grow up. Drink the milk of the word daily and watch how much stronger you will be spiritually. Eat the bread of of life daily and watch how you can say no to sin more frequently. Watch how God's love grows in your spirit And how you can love that person that was unlovable because you're consuming the right fruit inside. God's word gives us the power to live for him daily. Colossians 3.16 says this, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Let the word of God get into you so that you have something to give to others. And after you have poured out into others, go back for more. How many know there's more at the table for us? Amen. Some of us need to press in and use our time this year to get more of God's word. The five minutes, that little devotional that you were doing, that you've been doing for years, is not going to cut it. You need more of God's word because you are hungry for more of his word. How many know today that you are what you eat? You are what you eat, right? Let's consume more of God's word. Listening to his spirit and see what God does in 2024 in our spiritual lives. If you're with me today, say amen. I want you to write down point number two. God's word gives us the power for transformation. When I grow up, I want to look more like Jesus. How many want to look more like Jesus? Amen. That's the goal, people. That's the goal. Romans 8.29 says this. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. More of Jesus, less of me. Well, guess what makes us more of Jesus? You guessed it. God's word. John 17.17 says this in the New Living Translation. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. 
God's word makes us holy. Through the word, the Holy Spirit comes and teaches us the truth and sanctifies us more and more. I love what Rick Warren said. He said this, the Bible is not just a book you read. It's a book that reads you. The more you get into it, the more it gets into you. If you've experienced that today, say amen. There have been times when I'm about to leave my apartment for church, right? And I'm in a rush. And then uh, thankfully, uh, when I get to the, the elevator bank, I have mirrors in my elevator bank, right? Because I check the mirrors before I go downstairs, and I realize that my hair is all messed up, and I, I realize that I didn't iron, right? And I thank God for that mirror check, because that mirror tells me the truth. Come on, who knows with me, who's with me here today? Amen? How many do a mirror check before leaving? Amen? Praise the Lord. Some of us need to work on that a little bit more, right? <laughs> the Apostle James tells us that God's word is a transforming mirror. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 says this. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself, walk away, but forget what you look like. But if you look carefully at the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Tell your neighbor right now, do what God's word says. Do what God's word says. Amen? Tell your other neighbor right now, don't forget what you heard. Accept the authority of God's word in your life. Listen and obey. Choose the Bible as your final authority, regardless of what culture says, regardless of what tradition says, regardless of what reason says, regardless of what your emotion says. Amen? Resolve that what God says to do something, you will trust him. You will trust his word to do and do it, whether it makes sense or not, whether you feel it or not. Amen? See, God doesn't care how many Bible studies you've been to. He only cares about what we do next with the word that we already have. Amen? Let God's word transform by checking the mirror and doing something about what you see. We also let God's word transform us by renewing our minds. Too many of our minds are cluttered with junk from the past. We have our minds occupied with sex and lust. We're trapped in abuse from the past. Our thoughts are, are stuck in lies and things said about us. That's the old mind. The Bible tells us that we now have the mind of Christ. But too many of us are still double-minded. We have two minds. The way to a transformation and a renewal is to allow the scripture to wash over our minds, to wash that old junk out of there. If you're with me today, say amen. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in Romans 12 too about renewing our minds. He said this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. How many are excited today that you can know what God's will is for your life? Amen. But we need to get into God's word. Once we get God's words into us, then we will be able to know what's good, what's pleasing, and what's perfect. Amen. How many believe that God's word is true today? Amen. We need, to we need God's word to change how we think and wash out of that old stuff from the past. Also, we have the word of God in us so that we can discern his perfect will for our lives. Amen? So how do we experience the transformational power in reading God's word? We experience it by meditating on God's word. Tell your neighbor, meditate on God's word. That might sound weird, but let me explain. How, by show of hands, how many people here know how to worry? Do we need a class on worry? Do, do, we need a, do we need worry 101? This is how, this is how to worry about something, right? No, but no, nobody needs to worry. Worry is just, just think about a problem over and over again. 
and you'll produce worry. Thinking about the terrible things that could happen. When you worry about something, you are meditating on the issue. Does anybody need help worrying? No, we don't, right? If you know how to worry, then you know how to meditate on God's word. When you meditate on God's word, you think about it over and over in your mind. And you start thinking about the ways that it applies to you and to your family and to your world and, and how it gives you a greater understanding about who God is and who God is not. When you start meditating upon God's word, you start seeing, well, that's a lie. That's not the truth. The truth is right here. I'm standing on God's word. I'm meditating on what God said is true, and I'm standing there no matter what happens. If you're with me today, say amen. How many people are going to start meditating on God's word? Amen? One of the most productive spiritual disciplines I have ever experienced, especially as a young Christian, was memorizing scripture. Memorizing scripture was so life transforming. I remember, I would remember God's word in the middle of a situation, in the middle of a trial, in the middle of temptation. You know why I was able to speak God's word? Because I had taken time to remember it and think about it over and over and it was right at the tip of my tongue memorizing scripture transformed my thinking because now i'm thinking god's thoughts instead of how i used to think be transformed by the renewing of your mind through the word of god someone once said memorizing god's word is like planting seeds in your heart they will grow and blossom, bearing fruit in your life. Amen. Write down point number three. God's word gives us the power to defeat the enemy. Everyone here finds themselves in a spiritual battle. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your story is, what your background is. I don't care how nice your family was. Everyone is in the middle of a spiritual battle. The battle manifests itself, itself in our everyday lives. It comes through words said in arguments and temptations from people around us. The attack may come in our homes from family members, from parents, from kids, even from fellow church members. The spiritual battle finds us in the subway and it finds us in our jobs. The Apostle Paul said this about the spiritual battle, that we are not fighting against the people that we see. He says in Ephesians 6 that our battle is against spiritual forces in high places. To stand firm, the Apostle Paul says that we are to wear the armor of God. Amen. Many of the pieces of this armor of God are defensive. In other words, you put them on, you put on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation to protect your mind or your heart against the attack of the enemy. The spiritual armor is defensive except for one item. In Ephesians 6, 17, it is, describes the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The term Paul uses for the sword in Ephesians 6 does not indicate like the long swashbuckling sword, but something like a dagger, a switchblade if you're in the Bronx. Intended for hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's talking about the word of God spoken, made effective by the spirit to cut through the devil's lies. Amen? When the devil tempted Jesus three times after 40 days of fasting, you thought 21 days was hard. He rebuked the devil each time by saying, devil, it is written. Amen? Amen? If Jesus had to use the sword of the Spirit to defeat the devil, how much more do we have to use the sword of the Spirit, God's Word, to defeat the temptations when they come our way? If you're with me today, say amen. amen. <clears throat> Christine Kane wrote this about using the sword of the Spirit in battle. When the devil is screaming his accusations every second, it's important to counteract them with God's voice. When the past screams, you are hopeless, you are useless, you are not good enough, you'll never measure up, tell yourself the truth. Somebody say the truth. I am alive in Christ. 
I am a new creature in Christ. I am the righteousness of Christ in G God in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am God's workmanship created in Christ for good works. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, it's somebody time today to give the Lord a clap offering today. Somebody needs to shout because God has given you the truth to set you free. God has given you the sword of the spirit to resist the devil and he will what? Resist the devil and he will what? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Friends, it's time to take up the sword of the spirit and use it in the battle against the spiritual forces that work against us. Don't fight your boss. Bind the spirit behind the boss in Jesus' name. Amen. And then loosen the spirit of peace over your workplace in the name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Don't just argue with your kids. Anoint that room with oil in the name of Jesus. Rebuke whatever spirits they brought in. Amen. Command them to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep healthy boundaries by not letting them run over you, but show them God's love to defeat the darkness that has come in in the name of Jesus. Somebody take up the sword of the Spirit today. Somebody believe that God's word is able to do what it set out to accomplish. Amen. Use the sword of the Spirit. Tell your neighbor right now, use the sword. When evil thoughts invade your mind, don't just passively entertain them like you're in a the movie theater. Some of us are just like taking popcorn and be like, oh, wow, this is great. This is an oldie but goodie. No, no, no. It's time to stake your stand with the armor. Take captive every thought, amen, and bring it in obedience to Jesus Christ. You have the authority in Jesus' name, but you must use the sword of the Spirit to rebuke the devil. You rebuke the devil and he will what? He rebuke the devil and he will what? But you got to use the sword. Amen? The word of God says resist the devil. Stop being passive in the spiritual battle. Gatorade, sports drink, recommends that you drink it, it, uh, while you're playing sports. And the commercial asks, weekend warriors, is it in you? God's word is the only weapon that will help you overcome temptation. Turn around the spiritual battle and win the battles that you're facing in your mind. My question for you today is, is God's word in you? Ask your neighbor, is the word in you? I'm going to ask the musicians to come up as we close. And I have a few, few hopes for you this year as a, as a pastor. Few hopes. Number one, for some of us, I hope that some of us will get off of Gerber. Gerber baby food. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. Stop eating that baby food. You've been on it for 20 years right now. It's looking a little ridiculous. Do what God has already instructed you in his word. So that way you can get to the meat of the word. For example, if you're not married and living together, get married in obedience to the word. If you're dating, stop having sex before marriage in obedience to the word. Stop fighting against the lust of your mind. Start fighting against the lust of your mind by taking captive every thought. The devil doesn't take time off. He's not taking vacation. So for some of us, we got to stop. We can't be, oh, 21 days is over. Now I can just chill out. No. You've gotten equipped. Now you're ready for the battle that's going to happen ahead of time. Amen. God is preparing you for what's ahead. How many believe that today? This 21 days is just preparation for what's happening. And I want you to be prepared. I want you to have God's word. And I want you to be relentless in staring down the enemy in the name of Jesus. Not in our own strength, but in God's mighty power and with the sword of the spirit. Somebody say sword of the spirit. Secondly, I want to invite you to a Bible class this year. I know it requires you to get up a little bit earlier on Sunday mornings, but somehow... You're able to get downtown to your place of work by 9 o'clock. But we ask you to come a little bit earlier on Sunday mornings. It becomes like, ah, oh, Pastor Joe, you don't understand. I have to get up. Uh. But you know what? God is calling us to be serious about his word. Some of us, we need to be instructed into his word. Go to Sunday school. 
Come on Thursday night for a Bible class that we're teaching. We're going through God's word together. We're just reading it and then sharing what God is teaching us. Become part of a class. Amen? For some of us, it's time to start getting on that Bible app. Every morning, you start reading the word. But don't forget what you heard. At noon, go back to it and say, you know what? This is the scripture that, that God was circling in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit. As you close out that night, just pray that word that God spoke to you. Morning, noon, and evening. Meditating on his word. Meditating on his goodness. How many believe today the sword of the spirit is effective? Amen. One evening... An old gray head told his grandson about, about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside of us, Saul. One is evil, it is anger, it is envy, it is jealousy, it is sorrow, it is regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, pity, and guilt. The other is good. It is joy, it is peace, it is love, it is hope. Humility, kindness, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it and he said, and then he asked his, father, his grandfather, which wolf wins? And the grandfather replied, the one that you feed. Start feeding your spirit with the good food of the spirit. And watch how the Holy Spirit gives you strength, transforming your thinking, and victory in spiritual battles day after day. God's word is powerful, and it will not return void. Isaiah 55, 11 says this, it is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. May God's word transform us. It is powerful. It is effective. It is what we need for daily living. Amen. Would you bow your heads with us at this time? Father, we thank you for keeping us over this 21 days during the fast. We thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you for getting us back on track with you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would stand firm, Lord God. Thank you for preparing us for the battle ahead. Help us to be rooted in your word. May we listen and obey. Show us the areas where we fall short because of sin. Wean us from the addictions that are taking us away from the good food. Teach us to use the sword of the Spirit so that we can resist the devil. And today we believe that he will flee. Jesus, may you be glorified through a life that looks more and more like you. Less of me and more of you. If that's your prayer today, let the Lord know that. Less of me, more of you. We want to look more and more like you, Jesus. We know that your word sanctifies us. Father, give us a hunger and a thirst for that which is life-giving, Lord God. Help us to cast aside everything that is not of you, Lord. With every head bowed, I want to let you know the verdict. The verdict is this. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. If you keep doing what you're doing without God, the result is eternal separation from God. That's not God's will for your life. God's will is so you humble yourself and recognize your need for a Savior. Jesus is the only one that is able to save us from our sins. The Word of God says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. If you're listening to the Word and you want to respond to Jesus by saying yes to Him, indicated by raising your hand. If you're saying yes to the convicting work of the Spirit upon you, just indicated by raising your hand right now. 
Amen. I'm going to ask those of you who raise your hand, put your hand on your heart right now and repeat after me. Those of you at home, you can join me exactly where you're at. doesn't matter what time you're watching this. Lord knows exactly where you're at and what you're going through right now. And he's calling you to put your trust in him, to call upon him to save you. Those of you who have your hand on your heart, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I call upon you to save me. Holy Spirit, change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give God praise today? Isn't he good? He is awesome. He is awesome. He is awesome. He is awesome. Amen. Some next steps for us to take, and I want to encourage you to do that. But before we do that, I'm going to, I want to have a, a, a little preview or just a little announcement about boot camp that's coming up. It's discipleship boot camp. I want everybody that has never been part of this to come and be part of it. I'm excited. Thursday evening, February 15th, Friday evening, February 16th, and Saturday morning, February 17th. It's like our three-day in-house retreat. Amen. If you want to learn how to use the armor of God to defeat the enemy, to take your stand against every work of darkness, this is a great opportunity to do so. If you sign up today, I have a little booklet. It's called Winning Your Spiritual Battles. I want to give that to you as, as a little gift for signing up for boot camp. Amen. And uh, I do have a little uh, preview. Of, Michael, do you have the video? I don't know if the uh, audio is going to work, but we'll see. Amen. So that's boot camp that's coming up. I hope you sign up for it. We have uh, Winning the Spiritual Battle, which is uh, a little booklet that we'll give to you if you sign up today. So I hope you're able to join us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Melissa, are you going to close that? Or? Praise the Lord. And then um, Deacon Carmen is going to come up. Would you stand as Melissa leads us in a chorus and Deacon Carmen closes us out? Those of you who are online, God bless you. Love you. We'll have a way for you to sign up for boot camp next week. So um, praise the Lord. God bless you. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every goodness of God one more time and no more
Hello? Oh, got it, got it, got it. Technology is not my friend today. Uh, I'm so glad uh, to be here today, and I'm glad that the word came forth, and I pray that each and every one of you heard the word and took it to heart. Um, I pray that the Lord will bless you and protect you and that he will show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. Go. Lord, I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters, Lord, give them traveling mercies, Lord, as they get home. Father God, if they're going in the car, protect them. If they're walking, protect them, Father God. Lord, that next week, Father God, that during this week, Lord, that you will remind us that you love us and that you will never uh, for forsake us, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.